Well, hey folks, you caught me in the middle of playtime here. Uh, my apologies to my 17 faithful viewers out there. Uh, I haven't put an episode out in a while. But uh, show of hands out there, who missed me? Douchebags. Steve! Oh my goodness! Holy hey folks, uh, welcome to this episode. Uh, uh, looks like I'm still half asleep and I feel like it. Just got out of bed and got out here in the shop. Uh, let me show you what we got. I just got this, uh, I'm not sure how it's pronounced, Vivor, Vever, I don't know. Ultrasonic cleaner. Bought it off eBay. Of course, it didn't come with the tape measure. I just threw that in there to carry it out to the shop. Got your cord, drain hose, baskets. This thing's kind of cool. You can put little parts in it to keep them from getting lost down the drain right there. But uh, anyway, I pretty much had to buy this. Well, not had, but uh, I was trying to clean up the carbs on this motorcycle project of mine and there was a uh, passage with a one-way check valve in it and I could not get the check valve working so I figured I'd have to buy one of these to try it out and I figured I just will get one that's big enough to put a good sized carburetor in. Uh, this thing just from messing around with it seems to hold about two gallons of water. Um, what we're doing today, well this is going to take a few days but you're going to see it just in one episode obviously. I'm going to try uh, various different cleaning solutions in it. Now if you've been watching my channel, you know that I'm a cheap ass most of the time. So uh, I wanted to find out uh, what uh, of the cheap kind of cleaning solutions are out there. I'm going to try just uh, water with dishwashing detergent in it. I'm going to try, what's the next one, uh, vinegar. I'm going to try pine salt. I'm going to try, what's the other one, uh, lemon juice. And then I am going to find some uh, simple green but I'm staying away from any of the exotic high-priced uh, solutions that you could put in this I just want to keep this on the cheap see what happens and you get to come along for the ride now I don't know how scientific this is probably not very because uh, I don't have a white lab coat to wear while I'm doing this so therefore the professionalism goes right out the window but uh, let's get started and show you what I got here I rounded up these various carburetors I kind of picked out some ones that I thought I was most likely to use. Got a uh, Autolite 4100 here. I don't know what year it is. This is the uh, 112 Venturi, the larger of the two. There's also a 108 you can get, but I don't have any of those. This is an Autolite 2100. Um, it's a 121 Venturi, but uh, it's probably not going to show it. But down in there, you can see where the bores or the Venturis have been bored out and they've been sleeved. And they've bored it out so much that they've actually gotten into the, the casting here and JB welded it. It would be kind of interesting to see if the uh, ultrasonic cleaner attacks that JB weld. This was obviously done for some sort of racing purpose. Uh, this is a uh, 2100. Again, I don't know what year it is, but this is a kind of a rare, hard to find one. The uh, Venturi size. It's probably not going to get in there. There he goes. 133. Those are hard to find. I actually have two of these. And then these two are just some garden variety uh, 121 Venturi Motorcraft 2150s. Uh, like I said, I kind of tried to pick them out. In, uh, I'm not going to totally rebuild them. I'm just going to pull the tops off, pull them down, throw them in the solution, and see how each one comes out. And that way, if the day ever comes that I do want to rebuild one of them, it'll be part way there. What do you think there, not Steve? You don't care. He's eating. But there are, yeah, mud dauber nests down in there. Let's see, let's see, it's better light here. There we go. It's not the worst carburetor you've ever run across. But uh, this is the one I'm going to initially try out with just uh, water and dishwashing detergent. I had to actually squeeze the side of the basket out to get that to fit in there, but it is in there, and the lid will close. So let's get her filled up. See if we can get this Chinesium, hopefully not piece of crap, working. Uh, 
I got two gallons of water in there, just enough to cover up the carburetor. I always keep some uh, some of this out here. <laughs> it's funny how in the winter this thing turns into a totally different color. But uh, it always seems to recover when it warms up. Give her a generous shot. We can't forget the uh, offending motorcycle piece that resulted in me buying this thing in the first place. It's going to get run through all the washes until it comes loose. Or if it doesn't, then I'm going to have to result to uh, trying to put a little bit of torch heat to it. Hopefully it won't come to that. Well, I've been away for about, I don't know, a half hour, I would guess. And so I come up one degree. So it seems to me the heating element in these things are pretty damn weak. And uh, the water I started out with was even hot water out of the tap. From, oh, it just jumped up another degree. Up, oh, now down. I don't think it can decide what it wants to do. Anyway, I gotta go carry a piece of plywood up to the house. I will reconsult with the instruction manual. Well, it's been probably another half hour. It's only up to 34. I did a little, uh, Configuring on the uh, internet and uh, yeah, 32 degrees was what a little over 90 degrees Fahrenheit is which is what I'm more familiar with and uh, Even if it gets clear up to 80 which would take hours at this rate But like I said, even if it gets up to 80 that only amounts up to a hundred and seventy 172 Celsius I believe it was so yeah, I'm not impressed with the heating element on this. It is very weak. Now it is cold out here. Let's see, it's 40, about 44 degrees right now, which that's not terribly cold. That heating element should handle that. So, <laughs> but uh, anyway, I don't have time to wait for this thing to get up that high. I'm just going to start over. I'm going to go up the house and boil some water and pour in there and get this thing going. It's morning. I'm back from work. I decided I'm going to give this another shot. And what I've done so far is I ran the faucet here, got the hottest water out of it I could, and poured a gallon of it in there. That automatically got me up to 47 Celsius. And I'm going to boil some water here on the stove and slowly put it in every couple of minutes, pour in a couple of cupfuls until I get the temperature up to 80. And then instead of running it for 30 minutes, I think I'm just going to go ahead and try 20 minutes and I'm going to do this here in the house because I'm not putting any chemicals in it this time it's just going to be soap and water and we'll see how it goes here and then maybe if that works out this afternoon then I'll uh, try some pine salt this afternoon out in the shop Toot stands here in the kitchen with me every morning until she gets her little niblet of cheese Fifty-seven. Um, what I've been doing is getting this saucepan brought to a boil. Then I'll bring it over here and pour about half of it in. Refill the saucepan and get it boiling again. I've done that three or four times now. It really hasn't brought the temperature up as much as I thought it would. It's almost full enough. Maybe another two more times of that. I don't think I'm going to go for the full 80. I think I'm going to back it off to 60, which amounts about to 140 degrees Fahrenheit, which ain't nothing to sneeze at. And even right now, it's you, know, you don't want to put your hand on there very long. It'll let's see here. All right, that's enough. <laughs> We're almost there though. <laughs> it's always worth a chuckle watching Toot haul her fat ass up that cat tower. <clears throat> Finally pretty much full. Took a lot longer than I thought it would. And it got itself up to 63. And add a little soap.
Hey, bring that piece back. Well, time's up. I thought the thing was supposed to ding when it was done, but it just shut off. Did climb up to 67 degrees. I did go ahead and leave it on, just out of curiosity, to see if it would climb up anymore. But, uh, let's uh, take a look. See. Water's dirty. Well, I'm thinking dish detergent is not the way to go. It does make some difference. I can see where it has cleaned it up a little and has kind of loosened some of it up, but uh, it's not really very impressive. Maybe if you did it for long enough, but uh, just to be uh, thorough, let's go ahead and throw it in for another 20 minutes. Another 20 minutes down, it's up to 69 degrees Celsius. I think I'm just going to go ahead and shut the whole works down. Yeah, it kind of softened it up a little, but it's just not very impressive. Ooh, and that's hot. That's hot. That actually helped a little bit more. It seemed like the first time I didn't wasn't able to smear anything off of it. Let's give it a rinse off, see how it looks after that. Well, as you can see, it actually did take quite a bit of it off. I think that's... I'm just going to say that's probably was just dirt, dust, and mud dauber residue that I didn't get chiseled out of there. As for the visual looks of it, yeah, very, very underwhelming. Well, I'm sure it's better than nothing by quite a bit. I just, I don't think I'd waste my time doing this again. And I sincerely doubt that I got that passage unplugged in the motorcycle carb. I won't know until this afternoon when I go outside and hit it with some uh, carburetor spray. But uh, like I said, I really doubt it did that any good. But anyway, later on this afternoon we'll try the pine saw. Because that's all I've got right now. So this thing is absolutely pathetic. I think it's worse than yesterday. I've been out here probably an hour and a half and it's only come up to 39 degrees. So what I'm doing is I've moved it out in the dirt part of my shed. I'm just going to leave it run all night while I'm at work and when I get home I'll see if it's warm enough that I can throw the stuff in it then. I figure I'll put it out here where it's going to do less harm if something shorts out and it bursts into flames. I'm just totally disgusted with this thing. All right, it is roughly an hour and a half later, and I'm on my way to work, and it's still only up to 42 degrees. I can't stress how pathetic this heater is. Well, folks, as if this whole idea has not already been enough of a shit show, we've uh, run into another problem, which I should have foreseen. Uh, when I left for work yesterday afternoon, I believe it was probably in the high 40s. Now, I expected the temperature to drop, but not like it did. I just got out of work, sitting here warming up the truck. It is 15 degrees out with a very, very brisk wind from out of the west. And that just happens to be the side of my building that the doors are open on. So that uh, thing is, uh, is probably not catching the full brunt of the wind, but I'm sure there's probably a pretty good breeze blowing through there. Uh, frankly, already knowing the uh, state of the weak nature of that heater on that, I am not expecting it to have gotten any warmer. And matter of fact, I'm fully expecting it that it's gotten colder, but uh, we'll get there and see. All right, let's see what she says. <laughs> Just like I predicted, 32, what was it? 42 when I left? 
damn it. All right, I moved it back in the shop, got it out of the wind, and it is, what, about 38 degrees in here? Yeah, maybe about 37. Not Steve followed me in. I'm going to go to bed, and if this isn't at a temperature that I feel is usable when I get up, then I will have to take some other drastic measures. Okay, so it is basically almost nine hours later. It's two o'clock in the afternoon. It's warmed up outside a little bit. I don't know what it is, but it's still like almost 40 degrees in here. Let's see the results. I'm prepared to be very disappointed. I actually uh, piled some mineral wool on top to help hold some of the heat in from keep it from radiating out through the lid. 47. Fuck me, this is pathetic. <sighs> All right, let's see if I can take some other measures to get this thing to work. I thought this was supposed to make cleaning carbs so much easier. So this is my plan B, I guess. I just went to the local thrift st store here in town and this is kind of, this is kind of what I was looking for. This looks to me like it'll hold two gallons. I was hoping to find a burner to put underneath it too, either electric or propane or something. That way I could just heat up my solution and then put it in that and then keep it, hopefully keep it warm long enough to, to do its thing. But there was not a burner for that. The only thing I found that was a burner, I don't know if this thing's capable of getting something hot enough or not. I've got it plugged in now. It is warming up. I don't know if that's just a warming tray or if that's actually capable of boiling liquid, but I'm gonna, um, I'm just assuming that's not capable of warming up that. Not, but uh, just in case I got this other little pan, I thought maybe if I could just do it in small little batches and then just keep putting it in there, if nothing else, until I can find a burner big enough to handle that. But uh, we'll see, I'll put some water in here and see if it'll actually boil it or how hot it will get it. And then if that works out, Pretty well, maybe I'll just go ahead and try that. But otherwise, I'm just going to do it in little batches. Yet another disappointment. While this is warming up, and it is getting the water in there warm, and it may eventually get it hot enough, but I doubt it. But even if it did, it's taking too long. So yeah, either this thing doesn't work as well as it should when it was new, or it's just meant for warming up stuff enough to eat. But uh, I think, what, 50 cents there, 75 cents? I got $1.25 in that. I paid 10 for this, and that's, I'm pretty sure I'll be able to use that. I just need to find the right burner to put underneath it. I'll be going to Des Moines later this week to do some stuff, so I'll stop at some thrift stores in Des Moines, see what I can't find. If nothing else, I'll just buy a brand new one, probably a propane-fired burner to put underneath it. But uh, And if nothing else, from what I hear, you can make these into bombs. <laughs> So now it's been, uh, I don't know, at least four or five days since my last recording for this video. And I've got this. Couldn't find one on Facebook Marketplace that was close enough to justify the cost. So I just went and bought a new one. It really wasn't that expensive. And it's pretty much what I have to do to make this damned ultrasonic cleaner viable. So let's get my uh, pot of uh, pine saw solution warmed up. I got the shop warming up right now. I'm starting to have misgivings about using this particular carb because of the JB weld in it, but uh, I don't know. Mostly because of the thermal shock of dunking it into that really hot solution. But uh, you know what, this thing's been sitting around for years and I've never used it, so I guess it's no great loss. Why would I consider something a loss that I've never used? But So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, press on with it, but let's get a good look at how dirty it is. It's not as bad as the 4100 that I used with just the dish soap. This is about the worst side of it right here. The inside actually is pretty clean for the most part. Uh, the throats are kind of dirty there. Linkages. So, like I said, get a good look at it so we have a, some idea how it, well it does when it comes back out. I think I'll just set the basket right here. It's only a couple feet away from my old burner. There's quite a bit of radiant heat coming off of there at the moment, so that'll 
help warm that carburetor body up a little bit before it gets done. But that's a little ways off yet because the uh, pot of solution is not warmed up yet. Ah, she's really cranking out some heat now. Now this has only been going a couple minutes. It's already starting to steam. I know that the camera's not picking it up, but there is steam coming off of that. You can see internally it's actually starting to churn a little bit, circulate, whatever you want to call it. Shouldn't be long now. Might get in a couple of tests today. Well, I was just getting ready to say that this was uh, ready to boil, and I went inside the shop to do something real quick and come back out. Because before you could see it starting to actually churn, you know. And I don't know what the boiling point of pine salt and water is, but when I came back out, apparently it reached it because it, it spilled over and it put the flame out. So I probably could light it back up and get it going again, but I think I'm just going to go ahead and, and run with it the way it is right now. Maybe it can at least maintain the heat. Yeah. Well, the camera picked it up, but I'm seeing the current actually starting to come out already. Okay, lid on. We'll see you in 20 minutes. Time's up. It's actually managing to maintain temperature pretty well. I think it actually started out at 78 and then it gained a degree and it stayed there. I don't even have to pull it out of the basket and I can see it's done a pretty damn good job. Got my glove on obviously because it is hot. Yeah, I can feel it through the glove. But yeah, remember just, woo! Hot! Hot, hot, hot! Remember, as I was saying, before I put it in, how nasty it... We'll do that. A little bit there yet. It took the rust off of the, some of the rust off of the butterflies even. I'm not sure if it's attacking the JB weld, but uh, you know what? I don't have this one quite ready to go yet, the next one, which will be, I think I'll do lemon juice next. But uh, just for shits and giggles, I think I'm going to drop this in for another 20 minutes, see if I can't get what little bit's left. Got some right down there along the base, right there, and on the front, but otherwise I would say I'm pretty pleased with it. Let's throw her in for another 20 minutes and see. Well, the second 20 minutes is up. I don't know how long it's been off. UPS guy showed up, dropped off a package, and uh, apparently he's a gearhead too. He had this uh, nice little long conversation about cars, trucks, and whatnot. But uh, this is kind of interesting. It's off, but yet there's still bubbles and whatnot churning up in there. I'm assuming it's probably the uh, corrosive nature of the pine saw doing that. But uh, let's get her pulled out and see how she looks now. Okay. I'm not seeing a lot of difference putting it in for another 20 minutes. This stuff is still there, but it, it smears right off with your finger. I could live with that. As long as it's functional, I am pretty impressed with the pine saw. Uh, I'm guessing that right in here in these chambers was probably air was trapped in it because it was if I had tipped it upside down that probably would have cleaned those out. I'm pretty happy with it. Let's uh, let this cool off. I'll rinse it off and we'll get the other one going. The next one I'm doing is lemon juice. Oh, and I need to see if it did any good with the uh, motorcycle accelerator pump check ball. So it's just as a little bit of a follow-up. I haven't rinsed this yet. I just took a moment with just a little uh, blue paper towel shop rag type thing. Anywhere where I could get my fingers and the towel in, what was left would just wipe right off. Um, it did seem to attack this here. I'm not sure that's JB weld. I just assumed it is, but it seems like it's kind of soft. As you can see here by these different colors, 
this looks like it's probably JB, while well, that is some sort of an epoxy. Um, day comes I ever use, go to use this carburetor, I'll probably just pick that out of there, and if, if it's uh, exposed any anything that needs to be resealed, I'll just reseal it up with JB Weld. But uh, yeah, real happy with the pine saw. Did a great job, except yeah, in those spots that it actually couldn't reach because there was air trapped in it. Strangely enough, there is not much of any debris left over in the ultrasonic cleaner. So what it broke loose, it must have dissolved it into really tiny little particles that stayed in the solution. All right, let's see here if I had any success. Nope, check valve is still plugged up tight. On to the lemon juice. All right, so here's your first 20 minutes of the lemon juice. Not terribly impressive in my opinion. I did wire the throttle open. Um, yeah, there's, let's see if I can, some of it wipes off, but yeah, I, so far of the three I've done, I'm going to say the pine saw is the best so far, but uh, what the hell, let's go ahead and throw it in for another 20 minutes, just to be fair. All right, here is the lemon juice results after another 20 minutes. I can't really tell much difference. There might be some, but I can't tell it. It's like it maybe started to break up that carbon in there. Yeah, sorry about the lighting. It's, it sucks, I know. Yeah, it definitely softened it up. But I don't know, I'm just not impressed. So far, uh, of the three I've done, I gotta put the pine saw in the lead. I'll definitely say the lemon juice was better than the soap and water though. Let's uh, find out if it did anything with the uh, motorcycle check valve. I doubt it did, no better than it did on this carburetor body. Let's see, get the straw in there. Wait a minute, what happened there? Nothing, nothing happened. Okay, next we move on to vinegar. While the vinegar solution is getting up to heat, I'd like to point out that uh, I think the lemon juice, it spent more of its time actually attacking the aluminum. As you can tell, it's kind of a dull, chalky color. It pretty much kind of, uh, for the most part, as I could tell, ignored the stains and the contaminants. And when I just uh, wiped out the bottom of the uh, ultrasonic cleaner, what little bit of crud there was in the bottom had kind of a gray, grayish sludge color to it, like, yeah, indicating to me that it was, uh, the lemon juice was attacking the aluminum, like I said, more so than the stains, uh, which I kind of knew it would last summer. I think I mentioned on one of my other videos, or maybe it was this one, <coughs> excuse me, that I soaked a, a motorcycle carb in straight lemon juice for a few days, and it just ate the shit out of that carb. But uh, anyway, let's uh, move on. 20 minutes it up, and the bubbles are still just boiling out of that corner off of that uh, motorcycle card part. A little bit going on here. Maybe there's nothing left of it by now. <clears throat> All right, let's take a look here after 20 minutes. Seems like so far it's kind of like the lemon juice. It's kind of done some good in some places, but uh, overall, I don't know. I think it did a pretty decent job inside. Yeah, you know, all this varnish on the outside is... In the places it did clean it, it seems like it's pretty good, but... Uh, all right, let's throw her in for another 20 minutes. <clears throat> all righty, uh, here is the second session. Let's see here. It definitely softened that up. If you get in there with a brush, you could probably clean that up. Um, oh, I sure wish I could get it. Show the inside there. The inside's pretty good. Not too shabby. Could be better, though. This one had quite a bit of mud daubers in it. And oddly enough, there's some of that still clinging in there. Right? 
there. Yeah, some of it right up in here. Ah! The lighting sucks. Yeah, I found that kind of hard to believe that, that there's actually mud daubers still clinging in there. Yeah, definitely kind of softened it up. Did make a difference, but still, I'm saying that uh, at this point, I'm thinking the pine saw is still the front leader. I would have to say this one is number two. Number three would be the lemon juice, and number four is the uh, soapy water. But it does not appear that the vinegar really attacked the aluminum, despite the way that that... Uh, Motorcycle carb piece was bubbling. Let's take a look at that. All right, there it is. Doesn't really look like it's been eaten away, but boy, them bubbles were doing something to it. Let's see if maybe it cleaned out the one-way check valve. Well, no, but now there's something coming out of there, which hasn't happened before to my, that I've ever noticed. I've got the, uh, Simple green warming up right now in the pot. I'm going to take this in the house, hose it all off, and then we'll get on that one. Kind of interesting note here the amount of silt left behind after cleaning with the vinegar and water solution. The solution itself is definitely nasty too. Let's see how the bottom looks. Yeah, it actually looks. Looks like it took quite a bit out, really. Ladies and gentlemen, our last contender. It's green! Alright, first 20 minutes in the simple green. Let's see here. Man, these shadows are awful. It's loosened it up. I don't know, so far I'd say it's... Uh, I don't know, maybe slightly better than a, than a, yeah, I'm distracting myself here. I'm thinking it's a second place contender so far. I really was hoping better for it, seeing how it was uh, actually going to be a dedicated cleaning solution. Uh, this really caked on stuff. It is softening it up. Uh, it, it's not bad. Yeah, I'd put it in second place right now, but uh, as I said before, just to be fair, let's uh, give her another 20 minutes. All right, here is the second session. I don't know. It's, it's definitely solid second place, no doubt about that. And the stuff it didn't get off, it pretty well softened it up where I can, for the most part, kind of wipe it off of there. I don't know why the pine saw did so much better than anything else. Maybe, I mean, what this cleaned up, it did do a good job of cleaning it. And yeah, what it left behind was kind of greasy, nasty stuff, not so much carb varnish. Maybe the carburetor that I used with the uh, pine saw, maybe it just kind of led a different life and had a different kind of filth on it. Maybe that's why it worked so great. I think what I'm gonna do I'm going to go ahead and get some more pine saw and try cleaning a couple more of these carburetors with it that failed with the other cleaner. Just, you know, as a comparison in that way. And I almost forgot. One last test for the motorcycle accelerator pump check ball. No. Whoop, get up here so you can see. I 
I'm not sure what that's supposed to do, but uh I don't know about this. Maybe I'm gonna have to restudy it. Maybe maybe it is fine and I have just uh misinterpreted the passages wrong. If not, I have one more last ditch thing I can do, which would be to try to apply some heat to this and hopefully not overheat it enough to warp or totally ruin this housing. But maybe the, some heat from a small torch might be enough to break loose the corro corrosion that is holding that check ball. Well, it is the next day, and as I already mentioned yesterday, I'm going to cook up another batch of uh, fresh pine saw and see if that uh, carb was a fluke that it cleaned so well. I figured why not be thorough about it. Uh, the two, I'm going to try cleaning two carbs. I think the one that I did with the lemon juice and the other with the simple green. Uh, the reason I picked the one with the lemon juice is it had quite a bit of like dried up varnish on it and there's some carbon inside. And the uh, one that had the simple green, it has quite a bit of uh, like a greasy residue on the outside of it. So we'll see how uh, the pine salt does with those two. If they comes out as good as that uh, one that I did the pine salt with yesterday, then uh, we do have a clear winner. This is the carb, like I said, that was done in the lemon juice. It has quite a bit of like a hard varnish on it and has some carbon on the inside. Here was the one that was done with the simple green and it is, even though it did pretty good, there is still quite a bit of this nasty greasy stuff on there. Down in the crevices. And if I can get into some better light here, yeah, down in the fuel bowl, a little bit of nastiness going on in there. All right, got the uh, lemon juice one in here that had all the varnish on it. Just got started. Not yet. Twenty minutes. Hoping for good results, but I don't know. That was that was just uh, that was just such a huge difference in how well the pine salt did based on the other options yesterday. It just kind of makes me wonder if it was a fluke, but we'll find out here before long. All right, folks. Decided, seeing as how it's daylight out, even though the sun ain't shining, to do this outside, maybe a little better lighting. I'm going to go ahead and say, at this point, that the pine saw was not a fluke. This is the first 20-minute session for this carburetor. This was previously the lemon juice one. And if you recall... I showed you how it had quite a bit of a uh, varnish on it. Had some uh, carbon down the throats and it is working on cleaning that up too. So uh, yeah, it's looking good, looking real good. I'm gonna go ahead and dunk it in for another 20 minutes. All right, here's the second 20 minute round. I don't think it really made much of a difference. Seems like the first 20 minute session did all it needed to do. There's still, you know, some black carbon down there in the throats, but uh, it pretty well wipes out of there. I know it's not showing up very well on the camera. Sorry about that. It's kind of a cold, dreary day out here today. All right, let's throw the other one in, see how it does against the... Greasy, nasty stuff. Okay, so here's the one I did with the simple green last night. As you can see, or hopefully you can see, there's lots of greasy nastiness in here, around the backside. Uh, the throats aren't too bad, but there is some nastiness inside the uh, fuel bowl. There's some more greasy, filthy nastiness. No rust to speak of, so won't be able to really evaluate that, but uh, let's throw her in. All right, first 20 minute session. The uh, fuel bowl looks cleaner to me, but it doesn't seem to have done quite as good a job on that greasy residue on the outside. 
But the actual rest of the casting itself, I believe, looks a lot better. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and get in here with some sort of a pick or something. Kind of help. I'm sure it's softened up. Let's see here. Yeah, it's definitely softened up. You can kind of smear it off. I'm going to go ahead and get in there and scrape around on it, kind of break it up a little, maybe provide a little more surface area for it, and throw it in for another 20 minutes. Okay, so as you can see, I've got in there with a pick and just kind of scratched it up and helped break that stuff up. Just out of curiosity, I wanted to see if maybe that stuff, how well it would just flush off now that it's kind of warm and softened up. Ah, got some of that in my eye. That's what she said. <laughs> There's a little bit of mud dauberness in the fuel inlet. Yeah, it definitely helps. This is actual brake cleaner, not carb cleaner. So it's looking like yeah, a combination of the uh, pine saw and then a little bit of scrubbing and some spray cleaner for the greasy stuff. But as far as like dried on varnish, that pine saw just takes it right off with no effort. All right, let's throw her back in for another 20 minutes. All right, it's out for the second time. As you can see, there's still some little, little bits of a... Uh, if you get them while they're hot and soft and warm, it kind of flushes away with the brake cleaner. The inside of the fuel bowl turned out pretty damn good. I am really happy with this. You know, for something I'm just going to bolt on and run, I'm not worried about looks, I really... Wouldn't even be worried about these little bits of grease. They're not anywhere where they're going to hurt anything. There's something kind of interesting. It didn't take off the, uh, what well, was a little bit was left of that uh, power valve gasket. All right, I think I've proved that it wasn't just a fluke at the first one. The pine saw is the clear and absolute winner here. Well, just like last time with the pine saw, there was hardly anything left in the bottom. So apparently whatever was broken up off the carb stayed in suspension in the fluid. So after the conclusion of all my testing, I went ahead and cleaned up these two motorcycle carburetors from a Honda 450 Nighthawk that I'm working on as a project. And while these weren't really terribly bad from the beginning, they were actually fairly good looking. They came out awesome, in my opinion. And then I have this uh, carburetor from a Suzuki King Quad. Now it was actually pretty decent on the inside, except for up here in this vacuum chamber, it was full of some dust and debris, but the outside of it was an absolute ball of scuzz, and it came out looking great. There was just a couple of uh, recesses I had to get in there with a, a pick and a hook tool and just kind of knock what was left loose and then uh, washed it away with some brake cleaner. So yeah, I'm, I'm a believer so far, but... Uh, I still got these two carbs and I got to thinking that uh, let's try another angle. Let's try just the boiling pine salt solution without the ultrasonic cleaner. So, okay, that one's not going to fit. Let's go to the two barrel then. That's a minor setback. Give you a close look at it just to uh, refresh your memory. A little scuzzy there. Once more, unto the breach. Maybe we'll leave her in there for about a half hour. I just set the camera down. I was going to put the lid on it and turn around. You can already see filth coming off it. So yeah, maybe the ultrasonic cleaner is not necessary at all. We shall find out. 
All right, so I came out here in half an hour and the flame was out. Apparently it had boiled over through the vent in the lid and ran down the side of the pot and put the flame out. And I'm guessing it happened fairly quick because the pot really was not all that hot. So yeah, for that whole half hour, it hadn't been boiling. I'm sure the water was still hot, obviously. So I relit it, got it going again, and turned it down a little bit longer. Or sorry, turned the flame down a bit more. And it's maintaining its boil without boiling over and putting out the flame this time. So it's basically been in there for an hour at least. So let's see how it did without the ultrasonic cleaner. Yeah, there's still a bit of crud there. And that looks kind of like the varnish crud that ultrasonic cleaner took right off. So yeah, the, the ultrasonic cleaner does make quite a bit of difference apparently. So uh, there you have it. The uh, pine saw works best with the ultrasonic cleaner. So a, a few parting thoughts on this test. Uh, let's talk about each one individually. The, uh, this is what I used was Dawn dish soap with the hot water. It was pathetic. Did hardly anything. Uh, pretty much cost nothing, but that's the result you got too, was nothing, right? <laughs> I did anyway. Uh, smell was not an issue, and that's why I did it up in the house. Let's see, where was number two? Pine Sol, our clear winner. Uh, this jug cost eight something at Dollar General, and it's not quite a gallon, so it wasn't quite mixed at a one to one ratio like the rest of my test stuff. Now, the this thing worked great as you saw, but the big downfall of it is the smell. It has a definite chemical smell, which is, I won't say it's overwhelming, but it's definitely annoying, especially in the concentrate that I was using it in, even though it really wasn't quite one to one. Let's see, this is uh, 3.12 quarts, so it's just a little over three quarts, so a little over uh, three quarters of a gallon. Um, but yeah, the, the smell of it's pretty bad. You wouldn't want to do this inside. I boiled it out here in the open and then ran the ultrasonic cleaner in the shop. And uh, I wore these clothes yesterday, which I do that when I work out in the shop, wear dirty clothes again. So they're just going to get dirty, obviously, but you know, when I put these on today, I could smell the pine saw in it. And uh, last night, even though the pine saw was the first that I did, and I did the other four, I could still smell the pine saw on my hands. So uh, there's the downside of that, but uh, it's definitely worth it, I think, for as well as this worked. Uh, lemon juice. Uh, I got this at the local uh, grocery store. Uh, had to get four of these to make a gallon. Did not work that great as you saw. I think this was maybe about $12 to get a gallon's worth of lemon juice. Uh, smell was not an issue. You could smell it a little bit, but it really wasn't a problem, not like the pine saw was. Uh, the vinegar. I don't really remember what the vinegar cost. I'm thinking it was three or four dollars for this gallon and there really wasn't a smell like I was expecting to come from the vinegar. About the only time you really notice it is if you got a whiff full of the uh, steam coming off of it. Simple Green. I paid twenty dollars for this gallon of Simple Green and uh, I'm really shocked it didn't do better than it did seeing as how it's, you know, supposed to be an industrial cleaner and degreaser. Um, smell was actually arguably pleasant. Now if you think about the cost of that uh, $8 for that uh, jug of pine saw, wherever it went, uh, you know, think about what a couple cans of carb cleaner are going to cost you, and they didn't do near as good a job as the pine saw. You might need a can of carb cleaner or two to, to finish the job on a really nasty one like that last one that I did, but uh, uh, well worth the effort. Uh, and discounting the uh, problems I have with the weak heating element on the ultrasonic cleaner, I think things went pretty well, and I'm glad I learned something. I know what I'll be doing from now on. Now, uh, are there other solutions that work better? I'm sure there are, but uh, my, the whole goal of this test was to use stuff that's fairly cheap and easy to get. Uh, I don't have to order something through a parts store or online or whatnot. You can go around and just find any of these ingredients pretty much anywhere. But uh, there it is. I hope you enjoyed it and maybe learned something from it. Uh, go out there and uh, find yourself a project and have fun with it. Or don't. I'm not your damn parole officer.